I would be surprised if anyone liked him by the end of eight. When I read it, yeah, he was very likable in the first episode, kind of likable in the second episode, a little bit less in the third. By the time I finished the eighth episode, just reading it, I was knackered. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, Jesus, this is awful dark. I've, I, I was like, I actually asked the producer, I said, have, have HBO signed off on all this? Oswald Cobblepot. Count your fucking days, you fucking mommy issues degenerate fuck. No point of beating around the bush with this one. There is simply too much to say and too much to talk about. So let's just go ahead and get into it. HBO Max's newest hit miniseries, The Penguin, is an absolute masterclass show. Not only capturing the essence of what the audience is looking for when it comes to a comic book show, but a perfect showcase of how to produce an appetizing spinoff from a fulfilling main dish. And while there are many accomplishments, feats, achievements, and all of the synonyms that I can think of that this show can hold their head up high and confidently hang their hat on, not only beating the played out and tired some Hollywood trope and excuse of superhero fatigue, which, let's face it, was relatively obvious seeing the quality of the source material, pre-established fandom, and universe that this was already based in, but in a way, and unfortunately because as a Batman fan, I am truly ashamed to admit this, but this was a show that absolutely blew away my expectations with each and every single recurring episode. It was insane and at some point an emotional experience to watch the Penguin unfold week after week as you the audience watch one of the most layered and complex comic book stories come to life pretty much since the earlier seasons of Netflix's Daredevil. Complemented by some of the best pacing in the streaming game right now, cinematography and creative direction on par with the source material that it's spinning off from, high intensity stakes and tension that can only work in a villain-led piece of entertainment, and because I am such a sucker for this aspect of storytelling, I had to hold it off in order to really get in a proper glaze, but a show that really took its time in order to create and craft some of the best and most detailed character arcs, character development, character relationships, character introductions, character foreshadowing, character growth, character revelations, and whatever it would be called when a character falls to the dark side that I have seen in quite some time. That is only highlighted and elevated by immersive performances and damn near perfect casting choices across the board. But obviously, or at least in my opinion, what I think really separated the Penguin and really engaged with the audience on a level that honestly no other comic book show or movie has really been able to do in recent memory is that this is a full on villain story. And as weird as that sounds, it's refreshing to watch a character, a show, and a vision that knows exactly what it is and doesn't hold back on who this character really is. And because of that, we the audience are served up some of the most disturbing, gripping, and suspenseful action set pieces and dialogue sequences since the season one of Daredevil back when Marvel was back on fucking Netflix. What a time to be alive. And just when you let yourself think for a second that you, the audience, might be safe from any more emotional turmoil, you get a full-on Mike Tyson combo punch as the Penguin wraps up one of the most horrific, villainous, depressing, and heart-wrenching season one finales put the screen, leaving you in a shell more empty than that homie from Get Out, as you come to the recognition of all of Oz's wrongdoings, what it means for the city of Gotham, and the fact that we, the audience, aren't going to be back in this universe until 2026. That's the real villain of this story. What we all witnessed here was a true banger of a show, and while I could just continue on the glaze, for now, non-spoiler edition, let's talk... All right, this is going to be short, sweet, and to the point, because obviously, if you have not seen this show yet, go watch. And if you have, well, you already know what I'm talking about. The Penguin picks up immediately following the events from the Batman in the wake of the devastation and wave of crime that now plagues the city post-Carmine Falcone and Seawall Collapse. You, the audience, watches our protagonist antagonist Oswald, or Oz, seeing how he doesn't go by the name of those tiny smelly fucks yet, has to earn that, navigates his way through the criminal underworld in a claim to rise in power. But when a wrench is thrown into his plan when the daughter of Carmine Falcone is released from Arkham, Oz finds himself in a cat and mouse game not only in a race against time, but in a struggle for power, status, legacy, respect, and in the worst cases, his own life, as the crime bosses of Gotham all seek the top of the pyramid. But will Oz have the wits, intelligence, and most importantly, luck to overcome the odds that have been stacked against him, the self-awareness in order to overcome his past traumas, 
and the grit in order to see through what needs to be done in the sake of his goals? Or will the criminal underworld of Gotham, Sophia Falcone, and his own demons spit him back out to the streets of Eastside where he belongs? Yeah, I know that was an incredibly vague plot synopsis, and for everybody who has seen the show, you'll know that there was way more complexity and nuance when it comes to this story, but in a time where it is relatively obvious that we, the audience, are infected with bad superhero fatigue, but somehow Hollywood still finds the time to berate the audience with the nonsense take of superhero fatigue, removing the most important word in order to use an excuse so tiresome and mind-numbing at this point that it really highlights the lack of self-awareness and lack of creativity Hollywood era that we find ourselves in right now. And I believe that The Penguin is just another example to add to a small but ever-growing list in the post-endgame superhero catalog of genuine, audience-pleasing, quality superhero content. But with that being said, it goes without saying that a show like The Penguin does not work without the character performances themselves. The incredibly detailed and immersive character acting not only from Colin Farrell as Oz, but Sophia, the entirety of the Falcon family, Salvatore, Francis, Victor, was absolutely fantastic. And I think these character performances alone really help elevate the show to heights that are so rarely achieved nowadays due to the lack of a commitment across the board when it comes to how to tackle characters in our new age of shit storytelling. And because of that, I thought The Penguin was an absolutely phenomenal show and a telling of a true villain origin story from beginning to end without embracing, adapting, or inserting any sort of the half-assed anti-hero or misunderstood hero tropes that Hollywood has been so obsessed with over the past half decade. A show that really brought to life an incredible villain in an absolutely stacked rogues gallery, and really showcased that immersive storytelling, thought-provoking characters, ground-level world-building, high-intensity stakes, effective plot twists, and devastating betrayals are still on the menu. This is how you make a Batman villain story without Batman. Take some notes, Sony, you oblivious blokes. I do believe congratulations are in order for Matt Reeves and the entire team behind the making of this Batman universe. The sheer quality and craftsmanship is all time. I absolutely love this universe, and the Batman is my favorite movie of all time. And while I do believe that keeping this universe separate from the James Gunn universe is the right way to go about this whole new DCU, it does raise the question that is Warner Brothers running into the same problem that pretty much forced them to make this pivot in creative direction in the first place, are there simply too many chefs in the kitchen? And is the sous chef more critically received by the audience than the head chef? I don't know. It's hard to really know. And while I don't really think it will be too much of an issue for James Gunn in the DCU at launch, by the time his Batman, the Brave and the Bold, sees the light of day, well, I guess we'll just see how that goes. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, The Penguin was easily cinema on the small screen, with the biggest problem of the show being the fact that we the audience now have to wait two whole years in order to continue this story, these characters, and this universe. Also just to clarify real quick, I don't think Batman had to show up for any of the actions done during the course of this show. There really wasn't any reason for Batman to show up until maybe the leveling of the city block, but even with that being said, I'll just go ahead and leave this here. It's a big city. I can't be everywhere. Of course, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.